There was a study published last week, and it came from Britain, where the researchers went to the supermarket and they brought five different uh, varieties of vegetables, broccoli, cauliflower, Brussels sprouts, and uh, two others. That makes five. And, uh, they <laughs> <laughs> and uh, they took them home, and they cooked them by either steaming them, stir-frying them, uh, uh, microwaving them or boiling them for two to three or four minutes. And they boiled them for 30 minutes. All of the cooking that was done for two to three minutes, regardless of whether it was in a microwave or stir frying or steaming, there was no nutrient loss. It was insignificant. But after 30 minutes of boiling broccoli, there was a significant nutrient loss. However, they found all of the nutrients in the water. So, Take the water. <laughs> Jeff, you've been interviewing, I think you've interviewed everyone over the weekend. Have you, or a number of people here, of uh, the speakers for your, for your upcoming book. I'm curious to know, you were here teaching people. What have you learned? I've learned everything. <laughs> it was most of what I heard here was completely new to me. And it just opened my eyes. And I, have, uh, I feel so privileged because I've been a vegan, but I've been a vegan from the animal point of view, and I hadn't thought about me. What was I getting out of this? Uh, and my wife is a pediatrician, a doctor in Auckland, who's also a vegan, and we have spent a lot of time thinking about food, but I, I don't think we were thinking about it as deeply as everyone here. So I've been calling her two or three times a day and telling her, hey, cut out the salt. And I asked her after talking to Dr. Esseltine, I said, please, when I come home, I don't want to see any oil in the house anymore. <laughs> <laughs> and now, hearing Dr. Furman, I've got all kinds of ideas, so um, she'll be very open to it, too. And what I'm, I'm very pleased to see that I am open to this. And I, I'm, I, I wonder how one can do this in general. How is it that people sometimes shut their minds and don't want to hear something new because they have been socialized, they've been acculturated into not believing these things. And it, it's, it's very hard for us. It, there's something about the quality perhaps here that everyone is so amazing that I just automatically know they're telling the truth and you have to listen. It's your job to simply absorb it and then put it into action. So I, I've really, I, I think my life from today on um, well, as soon as I get back to New Zealand, <laughs> we'll be transformed. The only thing I carry is an orange juice squeezer. So that I have. And I buy organic oranges wherever I go and then make it in the morning. Thank you for the question. The guy who uh, invented or who perfected this procedure is named Dr. Robert Vogel. And I believe right now he's the uh, editor of the journal Circulation and the president of the American College of uh, Cardiology. <clears throat> and I um, got to... Um, meet with him and discuss some of his work last November and he's become very interested in what um, we do and the effects of all of this because he's been studying it and so he's created this procedure where he can measure what happens to your blood flow immediately and up to a few hours um, after you eat not only meals but different foods and one of the studies he did was on uh, some like olive oil and he measured uh, this, what he calls flow-mediated dilation, so the ability of blood flow to go through the arteries after consuming olive oil. And blood flow decreased 31% for up to six hours, peaking at four hours. Right, didn't, didn't return to normal for six hours. So then he had people eat a big salad and put olive oil on the salad and remeasured it again. And uh, blood flow still went down, but a little less. So the salad had protective nutrients in it that help protect from the damaging effect of olive oil. That's actually the way he wrote it in his study. And he actually said that's really the benefit of the Mediterranean diet. It's not the olive oil. They got away with using olive oil. It's because they ate a diet that was high in fruits and vegetables and whole grains and beans and legumes, and they moved around a lot and they didn't overeat. But he says when you take that same olive oil and you pour it over an American diet, <laughs> which, is, which is how most people um, you know, interpret the Mediterranean diet, being they don't have any clue to what it is, they just go out and eat their regular meal and just pour olive oil all over it and go, isn't that Mediterranean? <laughs> and of course they dip bread in it, 
you know, I have a glass of wine. And in case they're wrong, they probably take Lipitor when they get home. <laughs> <laughs> so then he measured um, canola oil, which uh, also decreased blood flow, but a lot less. And he measured salmon, which had no effect. It was neutral. But uh, then he measured different diets. And uh, he did Ornish, South Beach, Atkins, and uh, the typical American diet. And uh, the effects were just what you would imagine, in order. So there was a, he was measuring uh, different diets and what happened to blood flow. He also then measured fast food restaurant meals. And um, you know, eating a cheeseburger and <laughs> You know, a cheeseburger and a milkshake had a dramatic reduction in blood flow immediately after and lasted for hours. And he also showed some of the um, long-term effects that if you eat fast food more than twice a week, your, your uh, risk for metabolic syndrome and diabetes goes up dramatically, not just obesity. And he measured CRP levels, and in those who ate, uh, everybody knows CRP, it's a measure of inflammation. Those levels were up dramatically if you ate at fast food restaurants more than twice a week. And also was white blood cell, which was another marker of inflammation. <clears throat> and he also did those same studies on different um, diets, the same ones I mentioned, and the same results that you would imagine. So, you know, when people tell you that maybe they're on these diets and losing weight, you know, there's other things happening that they may not be aware of that are going to create great harm down the road.